Horse racing fans, welcome back to Photo Finish Horse Racing. So I know the last time we left off, I was trying to figure out the breeding function. I knew I had to obviously retire my horse, Busy Sunrise, who is currently retired on screen right now. But I was wondering when breeding took place. It didn't really give me any indication. I didn't know where my um, my breeding uh, sires or broodmares were going, at least, when I was acquiring them from the breeding rights. We finally figured it out. So for what I know, it's January and February in this game that you can breed. I don't know about March. So here's um, Busy Sunrise again, the horse I retired. Um, you can look at more of his stats. So he finished with 15 starts, 12 wins, 13 places, um, and earned a total of $210,000, with the biggest race being a $30,000. So not bad for this closer. Um, we see the bloodline coming from Third Promise, Charm Lake Winter. But you guys are probably most importantly interested in seeing the first foal I got from him. I did this off screen because I was experimenting with breeding. I wanted to see how it worked officially before I actually showed you guys. And I'm going to do that here into today's video. This is Busy Lion. Um, this horse is a closer like his father. Um, B stats already, so will be much better. And just to show you the bloodline, Busy Sunrise and Lord Lion. Lord Lion is what i'm gonna assume the i'm not sure busy sunrise is the i don't really tell you if it's the broodmire or the broodmare or the sire um if i'm i'm kind of it just says parent one parent two so i guess maybe it leaves it up to you to decide i don't think the game actually tells you uh per se what their actual um gender is like most horse games they tell you philly colt mare broodmare this game just shows you the phenotypes of course um you know, the general history, which this horse is basically just born, not even one years old yet. Um, yeah, it doesn't really tell you, from my understanding. And all these letter grades, these are just how the horses are ranked. So I suppose you could probably decide yourself who you want to be the broodmare and the sire. Busy Lion, I figured, was a sire, so Lord Lion. Um, which, yeah, Busy Sunrise, excuse me, uh, which is the sire of this uh, new horse you're seeing on screen. Busy Lion, I guess I'm probably, I'm probably just going to name him a colt for the time being. And I'm just going to say that his mother was Lord Lion um, by uh, the hashtag blessed Golden Kingdom. Um, it, I, it's very unusual, but it's one of the first games ever. I think Pocket Stables is similar, right? Where the gender is kind of up for you to decide or it's kind of, um, you know, just I guess you pick whatever you want, which is, I guess, fine. I mean, it's a video game after all, but uh, still, it's just it's a little... Uh, you know, it's just an adjustment considering, like I said, every game I've played have, has always given you a choice um, of obviously seeing uh, the fillies, the, the sires, uh, brood mares, uh, all of that stuff, colts. So let's go ahead and get into breeding. So what we're going to do is try another breeding pair um, with the same sire. So I think I have an S-ranked horse again. I thought I did. Maybe an A? No. No. Is it B? Minus, I forgot it's over here. Silver stars. Yeah, the this um the way you choose your horses here is a bit weird. Um, I admit. So I do have a S ranked horse named the Love Letter. Now because this horse is pretty good at four to seven, if I were to breed this horse with my closer Busy Sunrise in the top um top of your screen here, um, we are bound to get an explosive explosive sprinter. Now, the previous breeding I did was a sprinter, which is my closer up top, Busy Sunrise, with a longer distance horse that runs like 8 to 10 furlongs. So that's why the foal that I just recently acquired kind of looks like it'll be a decent enough horse to make take a step up, running probably 7 to 8 furlongs maximum. So I, did, I wanted to increase the range. I didn't want to keep horses that are only sprinters. I wanted some more endurance. So I could take the chance of either using Love Letter here, or I can maybe try to take a chance on... I believe, uh, a couple of A-ranked horses as well. But we have Royal Palace here. This is 11 to 15, a much, much longer distance horse, which I think makes sense to wait until I have the proper long distance horse for that. So in the meantime, we have another uh, kind of a, a, a sprinter to mid-distance type of horse, Minotaur, uh, A-ranked minus horse, S for the burst rating, uh, flexible, in fact, I think I'm going to try Minotaur, lower grade, but I'd rather save the higher horses once we get a little bit further in the game. So we're going to breed Busy Sunrise, who I'm going to say is our sire, and Minotaur, which I'm going to say is the broodmare. But technically, I guess the way the games work, these should be the sires that we are picking at the bottom here, and the broodmare would be at the top. But again, it doesn't really tell you, so I suppose you can kind of decide it however you want. Um... 
yeah, I guess technically it would work that the Minotaur would be the sire, right? That's kind of how it works. You pick the sire, the group of sires, and you already have your broodmare. So maybe that's how I'll do. Let me know if I should stick to the other way, but um, I'll, I guess I'm going to have to flip it. Busy Sunrise is probably going to have to be, be the broodmare, and Minotaur is going to have to be the sire, because that's usually how it is in these games. But feel free to let me know. But there's the fall. <laughs> the little animation, that's pretty cute. Busy Minotaur, and it automatically puts names together uh, combined based off of what the parents named was our horse wasn't fully trained the fall will need more time which i received the, that message from the first time um improve skills that's something new uh busy minotaur i i'd say why not let's just keep the names kind of consistent just so we can build some familiarity as we progress so technically speaking i think i could do one more breeding like i i have like three more horses to use I do kind of want to get a sprinter as well, but right now we have Busy Lion, who is our closer, B+. And again, just to show you this horse's pedigree, um, as far as the distance, I think I, I should be able to, oh no, you can't do that. Okay, I thought you could click on the parents, but you can't. So um, yeah, I'm going to say the sire actually had a longer distance, and the brood mare is obviously our closer sprinter. So genetic trait, can I reveal this? Successfully completed genetic testing, new skill unlocked. So if I go to genetics, um, yeah, these are just for codes, right? Um, I'm not seeing anything that's really giving me the answers that I want, which is fine. I'm going to have to progress. So we have two new foals, Busy Lion and Busy Minotaur. Yeah, they are half siblings. So Busy Lion will run eight to 10 furlongs. So I did get the endurance I wanted from this first foal. And the second foal, Busy Minotaur, will be the four to eight horse, furlong horse that can run a decent distance. So... I think for now I'm just going to stick to that. I'm actually going to fast forward, um, try to fast forward to the next couple of years just to see how our horses progress as they get closer to race age. So I'm just going to keep you guys here with me because I am very curious if any of you have uh, played this game yet, if you've tapped into it. And if you have, do you enjoy it? Um, do you think there's still obviously work to be done? You know, Do you want to see certain features before maybe you give it a chance? Um, I think it's worth the play, man. I do. I think it's worth the play. They've updated it so much that it almost feels like a brand new game from the last time I played it several years ago. And like I said, it was actually almost a half a decade. Um, so just waiting till these horses are almost two years of age. And there we go. So busy line getting closer here. Only a couple more months to go. And be able to make his debut and there we are so busy lion is ready to race and his stable mate and half sibling busy minotaur will be ready to race next month so let's see if we can get one race in here for busy lion um which is i believe over here now and there we are so this is busy lion um b plus rated a horse which is not bad so now i can move the horse to the stable um for twenty five thousand bucks of course i have the money so that's a no-brainer <laughs> And fantastic. So Busy Lion ready to go. Um, not sure what I'm going to do with the tack. Uh, that should be pretty interesting. Can you customize that? Or is it just by default? I never really tried it before. Also a closer, which is pretty good. So even running the longer distances could benefit us. A dirt horse, of course. Pretty average across the board. I don't really know what these genetic things are supposed to do. It's skills. But I'm not really seeing that come into play for us just yet here. So obviously I'll have to wait and see. Okay, team colors, you can do team colors, awesome. So these are the colors of, I'm gonna say the broodmare. It was the yellow tack. Um, I think we should probably go with something a little bit different here. Let's actually go for, and imagine you can actually customize your silks in this game uh, to more of an extent that you can in starter's orders. That's, <laughs> you know, I, I really wish starter's orders would have made that more of a thing. So you can go with the base color and then as far as the crest, ooh, I like I like the pink and yellow. Um, it's something about those color combinations when I see them. They just, they really stand out to me. So I got to say, I like them a lot with the white sleeves. So let's do yellow sleeves. Yeah, let's do pink and yellow. I think this is kind of what I want to go here for Busy Lion. I think that looks pretty nice with the diamond pattern as well. Really excited about that. So um, yeah, just I'm really impressed with this game. I can't say that enough. And guys, it's free to play again. Like if you're not playing this, I don't really know. And unless, unless you just don't enjoy the game and you have given it a shot, I understand that it's not for everybody. But I guess what I'm trying to say is if you haven't given it a shot, it's worth a shot. It's worth playing for a couple of days, maybe a couple of weeks or whenever you have the time and you just kind of, you know, see what, what it's like. Um, I haven't raced against actual players yet, so I'm curious for that. But 
so far against the AI, I mean, it has pretty good replay value. So and it's pretty simple once you get used to it. So we're going to do a training session here just to get the form up. Let's do dirt team. And actually, let's just do a normal dirt training session here with uh, Busy Lion. And there's the new tack. You got to love it. So um, I want to get this horse into a race just to see how they'll do for the first time out. And uh, yeah, obviously, I'll get to a point where I start recording um, our multiplayer races, but it's kind of like champion horse racing. Sometimes you get in a race with other people. Sometimes you don't. It just depends on what race you're selecting. Um, the form is good. So yeah, let's go ahead and put this horse into a race. And they want to send us to Ordu Peaks Introductory. And this is, I don't even know what country that's in. It's definitely not, I can't recognize that country. I'm usually very good with my, um, my geography, but that, I cannot recognize what country that is. If anybody knows, let me know. We're going off at five to two here. Total purse, uh, excuse me, total purse for the horse. Um, it's about 4,900, 11 furlongs. I think it suits us. It's a little bit outside of our range, so I'm a little bit worried about that. Is there any shorter races I can go to? That's four furlongs. It's a little bit too short. Six furlongs, nine furlongs, two to one favorite. Tis in the morning breakout allowance race at El Rancho Verde. That seems to be a little bit better for us. Wet and slow conditions. We can handle the mud. Yeah, this seems a lot better. I wonder why they wanted me to go to the other race. <laughs> that was a distance further, so it's going to be a field of 12 here. And we're going off at 25 to 2. We have no chance. That's why they didn't want me here. Well, that's disappointing. Um, I'm, not, I'm, I'm wondering... If, oh, we're on the turf. Gosh, I didn't even pay attention. Leave it to me. <laughs> and we're winning! No way! Busy Lion out by five lanes. We went off at 25 to 2 here, people. We were a long shot. And this horse wins on the turf when it's not supposed to. And we just realized we unlocked a new skill. And that's also what's exciting about this game, skills. I love horse racing games where you can get skills like Gallup Racer. So that's fantastic. I just found out apparently our my dirt horse is actually okay running on the turf. That's pretty amazing. Um, and we end up winning that by over a whole second. That's incredible. So it's a pretty good effort there from Busy Lion. Great race overall, promotion to rookie, grass track skill confirmed, earned an additional $3,000 on top of the win. That is a great time, first, great first time effort to break your maiden here for this two-year-old in Busy Lion. Gets the job done. Um, well, Pete got about four years and nine months, so we still have basically three years of running this horse at its best. So that that says a lot. It shows you its potential is only at 20%. I like that it does show you the bar. I wish more modern games would do that, give you an easy indicator of exactly where your horse is at, let you know kind of how long you have to work with them, um, you know, to get as much winning and racing done as possible. So really excited for that. I think I'm going to